afternoon folks <clears throat> it's a beautiful Sunday afternoon and um, I'm glad to be coming here I'm glad to be sitting in the shade actually it is pretty warm here I'm in southeastern Virginia my name is Lisa Mason Ziegler and um, you're here on my little urban cut flower farm in the middle of the city in southeastern Virginia and um, while it is really warm out there in the sun it's almost 80 degrees um, it's kind of nippy here. I had taken off my jacket, but here in the um, comfort shade of my carport here on my work building, it's a little nippy. So it's kind of a, a, a great day. Hey, Mark. And um, so today there is just a lot of questioning going on about um, starting, should you start Xenia seeds inside and marigolds? And do you start them in the small block and how do you plant them? Um, I think there's a lot of questions about those two because as you'll see here in a few minutes, they both have kind of larger seeds, but they're thin and pointy. And um, so I thought I would come on here and actually plant them, plant some for you. And also we had our, we have our, I know I've spoken in the past about that now that everybody's working remotely, except for me here on the farm, um, it came up Thursday in our staff meeting that Suzanne really is pushing me to once again, we have not done this for years, and you know how you just kind of forget about stuff? She encouraged me to plant again one of our little three by 10 um, cutting garden beds. You know, there's a lot, I know that several people that watch us are flower farming, but we have a lot of home gardeners. And also for photography, it's a little intimidating to the home gardener to see our huge beds, right? I mean, you know, 80 foot beds of zinnias to the home gardeners, like, oh my gosh, who would need that much? So I am gonna once again, and I wanted to show you, I've got like weights on my stuff here to keep it from blowing away. So I'm gonna be planting one of these. This is our, um, the seed collection that I put together years ago for Country Garden Magazines when we were in there. And it's got all my favorite summer cutting flowers. The mixed Benares Giants, the Lime Green Giants, the little Oklahoma Zinnias, which are my personal favorites, and a sunflower, some coxcomb, and of course the foliage, right? Which is lemon and cinnamon basil. So this is what I'm gonna be planting. I haven't quite decided exactly where on the farm I'm putting this because we want it to be a standalone garden. And see, it comes with the diagram and um, tells you exactly how to do it, whether you're starting from transplants or you're gonna plant seeds directly in the garden. So I'm excited to do this. And you know, um, rabbit hole, y'all, already. Years ago, when I first started the gardener's workshop and we knew we wanted to do a seed collection, we actually made our seed collections thinking that people would need two um, three by 10 beds. So that's what we demo planted here. I can remember it was right actually over here. Um, this was before we had the land that I have now, the um, extra acre and a half. And so I planted two of these and a seed collection included enough seeds for two beds. And so I can remember in July, you know, it was hotter and blue blitzing outside and Suzanne and I were out there. We had done our commercial harvesting, but we were harvesting this little bed because we were kind of like trying to record how many flowers do you get from it? Is it enough for a home gardener, you know, so forth and so on. And I could, we were so wore out. We were tuckered slam out. I can remember her, I'm on one bed and she's on the other bed and she looked up and looked at me and said, what person in their normal state of mind would need this many flowers? And it is so true. And I tell you this because people just don't understand. And I don't talk about this much very more now, so much anymore because I have so many other things to talk about, but you do not have to have a very big cutting garden as a home garden for in a home garden. A three by 10 cutting garden, which is what this seed collection is all about, um, is like a big old handful of flowers every week. And because your flowers are gonna last longer, um, you just won't believe how much you get from that little garden. 
And I'll tell you the truth that by about July, if you aren't sharing your flowers with friends and so forth, you know, your whole home is gonna take on like the funeral parlor look because you're gonna have so many darn flowers in your house. They last so much longer and it's so abundant. So, um, so that's the driver behind what I'm doing today. Um, because I've already shared this week that, you know, hope everybody's staying healthy and good. And so we here are in day 16 of quarantine. Um, we have a high, Stevie's high risk, so we went into hiding, as we're calling it, um, two weeks ago this past Friday. So, you know, I've gone out to the store a couple of times, and he gets in his truck because he owns a business too, um, but he has a brother and a sister that are running it and taking care of business. Um, but he'll go up there, but he doesn't get out of his truck or really roll down his window. So we really have kind of been in isolation here. Um, so things are just kind of humming along for us, and I hope they are for you. And I'm just so grateful that we're able to stay home. I can't tell you what peace of mind it gives me to be able to put a bubble around Steve Ziegler. <laughs> um, so anyway, I just hope everybody's hanging tough. And I think we're getting to the hard part. The third week um, is kind of hard. You want to kind of think, oh, well, maybe if I just do this or do that, that we really are thinking we shouldn't be doing. Um, but I'm here to encourage you um, to hang tough, protect yourself, protect your family, and protect other people. And those people that aren't practicing physical distancing is hurting everybody. And you may not think it, but let me just say this, you don't know everything, <laughs> right? That's what we have to remember. There's people that know more than we do. So everybody do your part. So I'm writing a great article. It's supposed to be ready by tomorrow for our e-newsletter that talks about the benefits of growing flowers. And it's not about, you know, I wrote a whole darn book, right? About how flowers benefit vegetables and pollinators and all that. Well, this article is all about how flowers benefit people. And I don't talk about the science of it. I talk about the physical, the relief that you're gonna feel by doing this. And um, people that haven't done it do not know what they're missing. Those of you that are flower farmers, I mean, you can chime in here anytime. Even 20 years after I had been delivering to the same commercial customers, they still practically ran out to my van every week to see what I had. That's what flowers do to people, y'all. And there is no greater gift than you can give to your family, yourself, and to your friends is to share your flowers. And it's different than anything else you've ever done. So I'm just encouraging you to consider putting a warm season cut flower garden in. You only need a three by 10 spot in full sun. And so before we start sowing some seeds, so I've already made my soil blocks. So here's one tray um, and I'll show you all the trays as I, and I'm gonna lower the camera once I start doing this. Um, but the other thing I wanted to say, you know, I, you know, I'm the one doing all the fulfillment for our online store, and I just want to thank y'all. Our cart is slam packed with orders right now, so tomorrow morning, Stevie and I'll go at it. And I just so appreciate everybody. And I just wanted to show. I don't ever show this very much. This is our catalog, and I'm so proud. We do, I just love our catalog cover. So these are all pro cut white, night. White Nights at the dark one, and White Light is the light one. Um, and Suzanne and I spent a day getting this cover photo last summer. And we have already mailed these out. They get mailed out in January, so don't request that we send you a catalog because we are no, we've done, we only do one bulk mail in a year. If I were just to mail this to you, it would cost two bucks just to mail it. Um, but if you place an order, you get one in your order. Um, so I would love to send one to you guys. Um, it's got a lot of great information, including the soil blocking recipe, um, as well as it features all of our seeds and a lot of really great stuff. So I just thought I would take a moment to do that. So while I'm gathering my stuff here, let's see which one am I gonna do first. Let me match up what I'm doing to the seeds. So I have my packages of seeds here. And um, so somebody would ask, why in the world would you be starting zinnias inside when they're just so easy to put out in the garden? Well, on a commercial basis, 
Commercial flower farmers always choose to start indoors whenever that's a choice, meaning if the seed is reasonable to be able to do that with because it's easier, it's more economical, it's less labor, and you get a better stand of plants. But in the home gardener situation, um, it's even more critical, I think. So my last frost date typically is mid-April. Um, mid and so the time that we can plant, but it's recommended that you plant warm season transplants outside, meaning these flowers that I'm starting today can be planted outside when nighttime temperatures are staying at 60 degrees and above. That means you have to look to the horizon. Um, and if, if you're looking at, let's just say it's three weeks before your last frost date, and you're thinking, oh my gosh, the next two weeks for me are above 60. Well, this far out, you don't know what the future holds. But when you start getting close to that last frost date, or maybe just a few days after it, you can look at the two week forecast which is a gift to us now, you know, 20 years ago, we didn't have that, right? But when the nighttime temperatures are at 60 degrees and above, that's when you can start planting your warm season tender annuals outside. And sure, you can plant them earlier, but they will not thrive as much. They'll be more suspect to disease and pests. They'll just be stressed. It's like sending your kid to the school bus in 50 degrees without a jacket on. Yes, they're gonna live, right? but they are not gonna be happy about it and you're gonna hear about it later. Very same thing with planting warm season, tender annuals um, too early. They just are not happy. So when you're planting transplants out in the garden, warm season, tender annual transplants, 60 degrees and above is the marker. If you wanna plant seeds out in the garden, you have to wait even longer. You have to wait until nighttime temperatures are at the minimum 65 degrees at night and holding. And I will tell you that is about two to three weeks after the transplant date. And then you add into that, that you're putting seeds out in the garden versus I'm gonna be putting transplants out in the garden that are already two to three weeks old. You can see how we get zinnias before the end of May, right? So there is a huge beneficial curve to starting seeds indoors. And that's why flower farmers always start seeds indoors um, if the seed will tolerate it. I mean, we start zinnias, all of our sunflowers. Um, you all have been sitting with me on Fridays as I sow my weekly sunflower seeds. So I have how many weeks? One, two, three. We have four weeks already in the trays going one round, one set of four trays is almost four weeks old. They should be getting planted this week for sure. Um, and then I have another four trays that are three weeks old. I have another four trays that are two weeks old. And that's how we just plant. We start sunflowers every week. We plant sunflowers every week, sunflower transplants out in the garden. So that is the really big benefit. The one that is the most Oh, we have company coming in. It's just Stevie. Um, he actually had to go bail Bobo out. She broke a water line or something at her house. So they cleaned up the area, meaning sterilized it, and he went and did something. Um, so starting early has a huge up curb, right? And then the other things that people just don't even think about. I'm sorry, I'm looking at my notes, y'all. So if you sowed 100 seeds out in the garden, you may or may not get close to 100 plants. You know, it's not very likely. I mean, you first off, you have to thin. When you sow seed straight in the garden, you have to plant two to three times the volume of seed for the number of plants that you want. So that means you need to be thinning in about three to four weeks, pulling out and tossing. That's all extra work and that's extra money wasted. So another great reason why you should start indoors. And the other thing is, it is just so much easier, y'all. It is so much less labor. I walk out to the garden with a tray of plants, plant them, and there's a 99.9% .9 chance that those plants are all gonna survive and thrive. When you plant seeds in the garden, we all know stuff just happens. 
whether you don't water them enough because it's not raining very often or the soil's too cold because you've pushed the limits or a bird is eating them or you know there's just a lot of things if it's if it's cooler and rain 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 they'll rot right there in the garden that doesn't happen with transplants so these are all the things that farmers that commercial growers weigh in their mind so what i'm going to start here first so i am going to lower if i can i'm going to lower this hopefully Yep, so you guys are going to be able to see what I'm doing here and not see my face, which is probably a pretty good thing. Let me go down just a little bit lower. I want y'all to have the very best. I'm actually doing this on one of my dog grooming camp, um, trays, and I got to remember my little trick of getting rid of the... So let's fix you up here. Okay, so... We, you, you've been seeing me use, um, let's see if I can hold this up. This is the Cox comb that y'all helped me. We gave this a haircut yesterday, pinching it back. This is how we start for our big commercial garden. These are cafeteria trays that hold 240 of the small soil blocks. Um, and we use that size. For the home gardener size, these are literally hamburger trays, y'all. I mean, this is the foam trays that you get with your meat on it that you can wash up and save. We do sell them because it's just convenience and we sell a gob of them, I will say. And we actually have one that's a little bit longer that'll hold three sets of blocks because here's the thing. You see why I have two of them here that only have 20 blocks on them? You don't mix varieties or even colors on the same tray. Stuff germinates at different rates and once I sew all these, they're gonna go onto a seedling heat mat, and then they're gonna, once 50% of them sprout, they're gonna be moved to light. I did put a link on this Facebook post that takes you to my blog where there's a video, kind of me showing the quick and dirty of making blocks and then the, the steps that you go through, as well as um, on that same video page, there's a link to my online course, Seed Starting Made Easy, which y'all until April 4th is on sale for $9.95. It's a deal. It's about an 80 minute class, as well as a link to all the seed um, soil blocking and seed starting supplies. So I wanna answer this question that hasn't come yet. Um, this is the small block. You can see my finger next to it. It's only three quarters of an inch. We use the small blocker 99% of the time. If a, the only time I don't use this block size is if the seed is too big. For instance, a sweet pea seed or a um, sunflower would, but if you just trying to push it in, it would bust this block open. So that's when I would use um, the large blocker or either a plug tray. And the reason that we really try not to use the two inch blocker, which I don't have one here because Bobo has it, um, is 40, as you can see here, 40 blocks fit on this little five by seven tray, right? Or 240 on that big tray I just showed you. If I was using the two inch blocker, only eight blocks would fit on this tray versus also it uses 12 times the volume of soil. The block and mix is a special mix that you can make at home or we sell it ready made. It's basically compost, peat moss, and some nutrients. And it's very different than regular seed starting mix. You want blocking mix to be, um, to kind of bind together and hold together. It doesn't have any vermiculite or perlite in it. And yes, you can use those other mixes to make soil blocks. I read about them every day on Facebook. Um, but I will tell you that it's not that those soils won't make these beautiful little blocks. It's how well they hold up through growing the seedling and they tend to crumble and our compost-based blocking mix and our compost-based blocking mix recipe that you can make at home is not sterile. That's why our seeds grow so much better. It's a compost-based seed. Um, so we use the small blocker um, almost exclusively. All right, so I'm gonna open my package of marigolds here. Now, marigolds are not in that, um, cutting garden seed collection that I told you about that what I is actually what I'm planting. This is going to be an add-on. 
Um, but I decided to plant these because people have a lot of questions about them because of their shape. All right, so if I can get one in my hand. I usually put them in the palm of my hand, but I don't want to do that for you guys so you can see. Let's see where you can, you can't see it there. Oh, let's put it in front of one of these. All right, so this is a marigold seed. The black end that you're seeing is the seed part. What I'm holding on to is white and that's the tail. And what happens is these are really easy to plant. You literally just push the pointy end in. That's it, y'all. That's it, the wind's blowing. I hope it doesn't blow my marigolds away. I am literally just pushing them in and the tail is still sticking out of the block. The important part is down in um, the block. So marigolds and zinnias typically need darkness. They prefer darkness to germinate and that's what you're doing here. You're pushing this seed down into the block and creating darkness for it and also, you know, I really feel like these seeds that are bigger like this, when you push them down into the block, it really like just moistens the whole husk of the seed, right? And I think that just really helps it along. And you'll see when I do the zinnias that it is pretty much the same way. When I'm just doing this here by myself, typically I pour these, not a whole bunch. The, a lot of times if you just pour, you know, 15 or 20 into your hand, I think there was 25 in this seed packet, um, it's easier for them to kind of like spread out and makes it easier for you to pick them up. So even if I had, let's just say I was working out of one of my commercial seed packets that has, you know, 2,000 seeds in it, I still only dump about 15 or 20 into my hand. My goal you know, I'm always playing the numbers game, y'all. My goal is to put enough in my hand to finish one set of blocks, which is what this is. So there you go. Those are all, you can see the little tails sticking up, right? And so those are the marigolds that are now planted. So I did want to show this. This is um, the seedling seed pan, or the seeding, I can't even speak, the seed sowing pan that we use. And the reason we use this, and you know, I was so excited. Um, see, Bobo came Thursday and picked up all of her equipment to take it home to sow our, I counted them up, um, 8,600 zinnia seeds that she's sowing and bringing them back up here to put in the, on the heat mat. So I had to get a new seed pan out to use. And you know, here on the farm, whenever we get to open anything new, new gloves, new seed pan, kind of exciting because everything around here gets so beat up because there's so many of us using it so I got a new little seed pan but much to my dismay I don't use a seed pan with zinnias or marigolds but I thought I'd tell y'all about what it is when we're doing little seeds celosias basil all that kind of stuff um, tomatoes um, this little seed pan is aluminum and aluminum has no static electricity that means that if we, and we use a toothpick with a little saliva on it, when you dump your seeds in here and you touch that toothpick with a little saliva to the seed, it jumps onto your toothpick, y'all. If you're using a plastic little container, you don't know how much static electricity is in there and how much you're chasing and struggling to get that seed. It goes so much quicker. So while I did get to get a new one out, Unfortunately, I do not get to use it. So let's do this other 25er. So this little cutting garden that um, I'm gonna be planting has the Benary's Giant Mix, and then it has the Lime Green Benary's, it has the Oklahoma's, and those are what we're gonna be sowing here. So these are the Benary's Giants. And so again, I just kind of spread them out and let's look at, let me find a good one to show you. These look like little arrowheads. Y'all can see that. Um, and they tend to have a pointy end 
and a flat end. And in reality, if you have great quality seeds, either end going in will germinate as long as you get enough of the seed into the, into the soil. But it's just easier to sow the seed by pointing the push, the, um, pushing the pointy end down into the block. And you know what I'm just now realizing, and I don't have a toothpick out here. What I like to do, the Benary's giant um, zinnias are bigger seeds than this. This is the limes, and they aren't quite as big. And oftentimes what I would do is I would drop the zinnia seed right on top of the block and then use a toothpick to help push it in. It just goes quicker. So I'm gonna keep on doing this because unfortunately, Bobo took the whole seed starting kit, which of course she needed. Not a kit, it's, um, it's like a little tool chest that we have with all of her seed starting stuff in it um, so that she could do all this at home. So I'm just pushing the pointy end in first. And so what happens next, and that video that is on the feed of this um, post right at the top is a link to a video showing kind of a little bit an overview of the seed starting um, steps. And it also has a link to my online course, um, Seed Starting Made Easy, which we put all of my on-demand courses on sale 50% off when the quarantine broke out. And that goes on until April 4th. And we have sold a lot of courses. People are making the best of their time. That's what I'm trying to do too, doing something useful. So I can look back and say, I did get that done during that time I was trapped at home, right? So these are the lime green ones. And you know, I will tell you that, I don't know, that one's kind of soft. Um, I don't grow nearly the volume of lime green that I used to. They just don't last as long in the vase as the colored ones. So there you go. See all the little tails still sticking up? And I might hit those with a little toothpick once I find one around this place. Um, so those are the lime green ones. Um, and so I don't plant as many lime green as I used to because mainly um, they just don't last as long. And we, in fact, don't really even sell them to our commercial customers unless they request them sometimes. Um, what is this? So now I'm going to do Benary's Giants. And see, I do, I plant more of them in this little 3 by 10 garden. So that's why there's two sets of 20. So that'll give me um, 40. Looking to see how my, I need to do my little setup different so the people from the street can't see me um, sometimes. Oh, I'm going to have to put these. Hmm, where am I going to put these? Let's put them on this pad. What else am I supposed to say? I've already said all those things. So we're just gonna put these out right here. All right, so here's the Benary's Giants and I'll show you again. These are a little bit bigger because the flowers are bigger, right? So, oh, I need a piece of paper. Now I've covered my C pad up. Maybe I can do this. Can y'all, can y'all see that? See, these are definitely longer than the Benary's green, lime green ones. So they tend to be a little easier um, to plant. And I will tell you, when I'm planting soil blocks, I definitely have, especially when you're planting little teeny seeds that you can't see them after you've put them in the block, the zinnias are really no problem at all um, to see. But I always have a pattern that I go by and it's so funny that when you're doing little seeds, when you're doing little seeds, you also have your um, toothpick. So if I were to get interrupted, the phone were to ring or if somebody were to walk in and I had to stop what I was doing, I could stick my toothpick in my last block that I've done and then because I always go the same way, meaning up and down on my blocks, I always know where, which way to go and what I'm doing. Um, 
you know, for so many years when I was first starting out, oh my goodness, back in the days when this building, I wasn't, didn't sell stuff back then. I was just a flower farmer. I would sow tens of thousands of seeds by myself and I would just get into this little habit of the way of doing stuff and, you know, it really paid off. All right, so one more. And I am gonna do, I have to do this while I'm on here with y'all because if I don't finish this, then it won't get done. Because zinnias only have 25 in a pack and say there's, believe it or not, there's five left. Those were exactly the right amount. Um, I have to do both of these. So what's gonna happen to these after I finish sewing all of these is I am going to take these into the grow room where the seedling heat mat is. And so this is another reason that commercial farmers, let me spread these out, another reason that commercial farmers always have the right equipment, y'all, because it makes an enormous difference. Warmer soil germinates so much faster than cool soil. And if the room temperature, let's just say you're doing this in your house, and your house is at a balmy 75 degrees, and you're thinking, huh, if, um, you know, I can, so the, nor the seeds germinate the fastest at 75 to 85 degrees, okay? So you're thinking, well, shoot, my house is 75 degrees. That'll work wrong, because this mass of soil is 15 to 20 degrees cooler than the surrounding air temperature. And that is the number one reason people cannot get seeds to germinate in their home is because they resist purchasing a seedling heat mat and their seeds just sit there and rot. Um, I mean, it's really crazy. I understand, but in the reality, the cost of 10 packs of seeds is the cost of a seedling heat mat. Think about that over the years, right? How many... Um, how many packages of seeds you've wasted because you didn't want to spend, I think it's 38 bucks or something like that. Um, so this is my favorite zinnia, y'all. And this is gonna surprise you. It's Oklahoma zinnias. These are the small zinnias. Um, they're only about that big. And this is almost always what's on my um, kitchen table in the little white McCoy ivory white um, pitcher that was my grandma's that she made iced tea in forever. And um, it's now mine and I use it mainly for flowers. And we'll see if this is enough. Looks like it. So the Oklahoma zinnias are the small ones. And the reason as a cut flower grower, especially when you're smaller and getting started, um, these add um, texture to your bouquets. You know, instead of having all of the really big zinnias, it is just so awesome to have the small ones to mix in. Once we got really much bigger in our production, we kind of just, oops, I just hit that. Sorry about that, y'all. We just dropped them off because I'll be honest with you, when you're cutting, when we were in high production, we were producing 10 to 15,000 stems of flowers a week. A week, did y'all hear that? That's how many flowers were cut, bunched, and sold out of this joint every week. Makes me tired just thinking about it. But it takes as much labor and time to cut a flower that's this big and this big. You know what I mean? And customers are not nearly as apt to want to pay you for the small ones. So we stopped when we gave up the supermarket visit business several years ago. Um, and we stopped really using zinnias in those supermarket bouquets for a lot of reasons. Um, that's when we stopped growing Oklahomas because they were just too much work <laughs> um, and not enough return, even though they were my favorite. Because I just want to say again, this is something I really hit home in flower farming school. When you say the day that you want to become a business, it is no longer about you growing what, um, what you love. I grow what sells and makes business work. So here we go again. Um, these are Oklahoma, so I'm just picking them up by their little tail and pushing them in. 
And Oklahoma has some great colors now too. They have a salmon. We used to sell all the different solid colors, but we just got away from that as we tried to cut back. Who knows, someday maybe we might. Um, but the mixed, I like to grow because it has all the colors, white and ivory. Oklahoma white zinnias is the best white flower I have ever grown, meaning it doesn't get dirty and it lasts the longest. And so if you're doing wedding work, you've got to grow white Oklahoma zinnias. Well, you're growing every white flower on the planet anyway, right? Um, that's the, what it's all about is white flowers. Um, and the salmon, and they even have a lilac and a purple. I mean, I love, I'm just sitting here thinking to myself, why don't I grow these anymore? And we just may very well add these on to the grow list this year because, you know, we've, we're going down a different road these days. We're no longer in big production. We just produce for our members only market and a couple of commercial customers that just take everything that we offer them. And this is how I could have Oklahoma's on my kitchen table every week. So y'all, one of the, what I'm writing about in that article that's gonna go out tomorrow is about how I feel right now doing what I'm doing. And maybe you feel the same way just watching, right? Um, gardening, there's a whole lot of scientific reasons. I just read an article the other day written by a scientific person that talked about all the endorphins and all the things that happen in our body when we're outside hearing the birds and messing with plants and tending to them and um, all that kind of stuff. And I'm just here to tell you that it's just like an 18-wheeler rolling off your shoulders. And, you know, I'm not an anxious person. I have a really strong, can-do, just tell me how to fix it or deal with it, and I'll do it kind of attitude. I don't get anxious about stuff and worry. But, you know, I will say that this pandemic has just created some disturbance for me just because of business and concern over my family, people getting sick that are high risk. and um, But walking out to my garden or doing what I'm doing right here or cutting back my seedlings, it just, it's truly like an 18-wheeler driving off of your toe. Um, it's like relief, like you, all of a sudden you realize, oh yeah, we have a big thing going on now. All right, so I have planted and they all had the right seed count that's always nice to do too so I'm gonna <coughs> lift you back up here I have such a high-tech deal here y'all so there we go all right so I have my seeds sown so these guys are gonna go in onto the seedling heat mat um, <coughs> and I will estimate that these babies will be germinated in just a couple days. Um, and they will continue to, um, sorry, people walking past my house. Um, they will be about two to three weeks old when it's time to, um, get our cool season, I'm, I'm sorry, our warm season tender annuals out in the garden, right? And I will tell you that our tomatoes are already so blooming big that I really, um, I probably will plant them on the upper edge of when to do it and hoop and cover them. We were going to actually hoop and cover the entire garden, plant really early, trying to get everything going early. But of course, with the um, COVID-19, we just um, don't have the manpower here to do it. But so I hope you're going to join with me as I plant this little demonstration three by 10 cutting garden. Um, I haven't decided where I'm going to plant it yet, but you know, y'all be the first to know. We'll maybe we'll make one day the cutting garden, little cutting garden day, um, and see how I treat it and what I do. And we'll see what comes from it. Um, and we already have all the celosia started and the basil started for that and other places. And I'm just looking around. Um, and this little cutting garden is like the perfect companion to your landscape. 
you know, you can go and cut on some of your shrubs, some of your perennials, and just build amazing bouquets out of this. So, I'm just trying to think what else I wanted to tell you guys. Um, reading my notes. Um, so, if you're not seed starting, if you're going to start garden, if you're going to start you plant your seeds out in the garden, that is perfectly okay. And in fact, the instructions to do it um, both ways is in the seed starting um, seed collection. And the only difference is, is those of us that start our seeds indoors get about a six week jump on you because we can plant earlier and we're planting transplants that were started weeks before, right? So, I mean, it's like a double bonus. So, I hope that helps somebody that's, you know, wondering about how to plant their zinnias and, you know, why, besides the fact that the big block takes so much more space and soil, the analogy that I have as to why small soil blocks lend so much success to people, I mean, we have, we have, thousands of success stories from people that have tried all kinds of seed starting methods and they never had luck but then they sold a block and it's so much easier because they just were able to do it right well i contend that it's because of this small block the size of the block makes it easier to keep it evenly moist and evenly warm which is what grows great seedlings right warmth to get the seed to sprout. Once 50% of this tray sprouts, we're gonna move it from the heat mat over to the grow light. It's still in a warm room, but now it's under grow lights with no heat mat. And when you have a little teeny seed on top of that big two inch block, you have the same problem that you have when you're using plug trays or worse yet, peat pots. The bottom's wet, the top is dry. The bottom's warm, the top is cold, or vice versa. Um, it's just very difficult to regulate that bigger um, clump of soil, right? So even though we start our peppers, our tomatoes, um, those are all things that surprise people. That's why I always um, use them as examples. Peppers and tomatoes, eggplant, eucalyptus, um, those are all things that we do go on because they're slow growers or we want a much bigger transplant. Um, we do go on to pop them up to the two inch blocker. And I did a Facebook Live showing, um, doing the tomatoes, potting them up a couple weeks ago. You can go back on my Facebook feed and find it there. And um, so the two inch blocker grows, I'm just sitting here looking at these tomatoes. I'm going, oh, I have something else I wanted to show you. Um, the tomatoes, let me reach over there and grab one. You won't believe how beautiful they are. And I have something else I'm going to show you. I forgot I brought it over here. Coming, y'all. Y'all aren't going to believe this. Look at these tomato roots. And I'm gonna pull these apart. People ask me about this all the time. You know, it really is pretty awesome doing these Facebook Lives with y'all. I get to show you things I've only talked about before. So these are my big beefs that were started, if you can see, in the small block, and they were potted up like, I think it was like two weeks ago. You'll have to go back and look. And yes, the roots do grow into each other. You see me pulling them apart? But they are not root bound. This, they just hit the ground running. When you break them apart, they just hit the ground like nobody's tomorrow. I can't even tell you how amazing they'll be. And because these are tomatoes, of course, I would pull all of these leaves off and I would plant it right up to here. Plant it deep um, so that these roots can go deep. That is just, makes me wanna plant these right away. If we can, our bed, our garden is ready. If we just need to run over it lightly with the tiller and then Steve and I can make beds. Um, if it stops raining, it's like, it's hot enough today that I may even check to see if, if there's spots, an area of the garden that we could make some beds tonight. Would that not be the best thing ever? All right, let me put these back and then I have something else to show you. A surprise. Those were my big beefs. My two go-to tomatoes 
our Big Beef and Sun Gold. We love them both. So um, something else that we, you know, under all these big um, infrastructure projects we've had going this year, you know, we got our driveway put in, which we have been waiting to do for 20 years in Stevie's building. So I'm kind of moving some of my permanent plantings around. And one of those is our Pussy Willow, um, our Pussy Willow patch. And so I, we, my favorite Pussy Willow is the contorted or better known as fantail or fasciated Pussy Willow. What that means, this is Pussy Willow that we want it to get a virus that, I'm trying to look for a better one, this one's probably better that contorts the end of it, right? Can y'all see that, how funky that is? Designers love this stuff. And it gets all these nice little, I call them pussies, these little, the little, um, the little word, the word has escaped me, y'all. Um, this is so in demand, y'all. So, we had to move our pussy willow patch, uh, like four years ago, and when you move it, what we did is we just took cuttings. Literally, I just cut these like sticks and they've just been sitting in a bucket of water and look at the roots on this stuff. Um, this is why you would never want to plant pussy willow anywhere near your septic tank or a sewer line. And we grow it very differently as cut flower farmers. We don't grow it into a tree, right? So I had a hedge of 175 feet long, single row of this. And when it came time that we knew we had to move it so we could plant our native border there, we didn't dig those plants up. We took, we just cut them like we were cut flower stems. We just cut sticks. And then we put them in buckets of water and they rooted. And then we just literally ripped out all those pussy willows and trashed them because they were, it was much more labor. And of course, my husband came with equipment, y'all. We had a back, I mean, a little baby excavator to do that with. Um, to try to dig up those trees and replant them, we'd still be doing it today. Far better plan to just cut some sticks, buy, you know where my, mine initially came from? I bought a, two bunches of, three bunches, one bunch of each variety that were for sale at a flower and garden show for S cut flowers. I have no idea what name they were. I knew that these were fantail, but from the way that they looked, brought them home and rooted them. And that's what started my pussy willow 15 years ago. And you, that's how you buy Pussy Willow online. If you're a flower farmer, there's a, several, you know, um, Kent Miles of Illinois Willows, that's his Facebook page, has amazing different varieties of willows. He sends you sticks, then you root them. It's so very, very easy. Um, but for me, what I'm getting at is, um, so we did plant just a few of these in a very bad place, we now know, um, and one willow that I don't have right here that we have growing, I'm just looking at it right now, um, is curly willow, and it's a weeping curly willow. And our birds love it so darn much um, that we put it in a spot where it really has to be chopped down. Um, but I will root some and start a new patch. So I'm getting ready to replant my willow. We're only really planting not much of it. We don't use a whole lot of it, um, but we do love to have it during the winter um, to make a few wreaths for here on the farm. Sometimes we sell it to our members only market. Um, but this fantail that I have rooted will make, I probably won't make, but uh, um, Carl, our official stick man, um, Park Green Park Nurseries out of Canada, he's a stick grower, Woody's, they're huge. Um, he says to plant them in a single row. This is for cut flower production, y'all. Single row, six feet apart between them. And so this is what happens. I'll plant these this spring sometime. They'll grow all summer. Then next winter, after the leaves fall off, we wait until the cold kills the leaves off. Then we harvest what sticks we want and um, to use during the winter. Then we cut that plant that we planted back to about literally 15 to 20 inches because if you don't cut the entire plant back it will quickly grow into a tree which a will overtake the area and b you'll never be able to get good stems so 
after we've harvested, we literally go through with a chainsaw and just mow them down, and that's trash. And then they regrow through the next season, and that's what you cut as your cut flower for the next year. Um, so there's your unspoken tip of the day. And um, I had really hoped that this was the time that um, I don't know where I'm putting that willow patch yet. Um, because things have kind of changed around here and I'm doing a bunch of other jobs. I haven't had as much planning time for that kind of stuff, um, but I'll get to it. So I hope you guys um, learned something today, seeing how to sow, um, oh, I didn't say this and I really, really should, how to sow zinnias into the small blocks. And here's the thing, this zinnia is gonna grow in this block until I plant it out in the garden. That the secret to being able to do that is timing. If I had started this zinnia three weeks ago and this and expected this plant to grow in this little teeny block for six weeks, you're kidding yourself. No, that won't work. But when you start them two to three weeks before it's time to plant them, you will have an absolutely gorgeous. Let me pull this over here. You haven't seen this. They'll be kind of like this. These are my lemon basil transplants. I just wish y'all could smell these. Holy cow, y'all, it is awesome. But those zinnias will be just like these basil. So these were started March 5th. So what's today? You do the math. So these could be planted out in the garden if it was warm enough. They have amazing roots, which I don't know if you can see underneath there or not. It's really hard for me to see y'all, what y'all are seeing. There's a great stand of roots under there, and um, I'm actually gonna be pinching these because they are so darn beautiful, and it's still way too, I, I just wanna pinch these, but I need a pair of scissors. So I'll be mowing these down just like I did the celosia that you saw. I mean, can y'all see those roots? I hate this tray. It's already been banished. It's going to the trash recycling after this. Um, so you plant these zinnias and then right when they're about a little bit bigger than this is when they go to the garden. That's what they look like in three weeks. Um, so there you go. It is really hard to put this down. This would be like sniffing therapy in itself. So y'all, be sure to check out the link that's on this feed, um, thegardenersworkshop.com. And if you like and share this broadcast, it really helps me a whole lot. And we're in the process right now, and I don't want to, I mean, they're not going to all be done very quickly, especially under the current atmosphere. But what we're trying to do is we have so many how-to videos on our website, but we realize people can't really find them. So the way that you can, the, what we're doing to them so you can find them is we're posting each individual how-to video on my blog so each video will be like a blog because our blogs are searchable so for instance the most requested video that we have is where do you make the cut on a zinnia and even though i think it's on the zinnia seed page it's in a couple of different places people still can't find it and i totally understand our website is so deep and wide uh, we offer so much information, but until you really get in there and figure it all out, you have a hard time finding it. So Kelly is constantly now posting our how-to, taking them off, not taking them off, but copying them from the Learning Center over to our blog, and that way we can tag it. The, the title would be a good search word. Then you can search our blog with those keywords. We put in zinnias. Every article I've ever written about zinnias, um, the videos that are about zinnias would come up. So this is something really exciting that we're working on, but it is so labor intensive, y'all. I just can't even tell you how labor intensive. It is just not a click, click. It's a click, 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 click to do all that stuff. And then find some text and send me a message. You know, you really ought to write something on this video. And, you know, it's just so, but that's what we're, really trying to shore up this year is I just had my website rebuilt. I won a grant from the city of Newport News here in Virginia for being a woman-owned e-commerce. 
in the city. And they matched me $5,000. I paid five and they paid five to have our website um, remodeled, basically. And we're coming to the end of that. We're really pleased with it. And we really, I mean, it was how it looked, but it, had a, it has a lot more options on it now, like being able to search our blog and, um, and search engine optimization and Google Analytics and a lot of things I don't want to know about. That's why you pay other people to take care of that. Um, so we're just really trying to really beef up the how-to side of things. And, um, you know, I'll just be so glad when everybody's back to work and we can all be here together and brainstorm. And I have, um, I won't have to talk y'all's ears off. So gang, I'm going to carry my seeds in. And so the story is that my seedlings came back outside. These are all warm season tender annuals that um, I have out here on the porch. I brought them out yesterday. Our night times are not going below 58 degrees, so um, I've been leaving them out. However, Monday night, I think, is the night it goes down to 51, and I'll be carrying all 30 of these trays back inside. Every night, bring them in. Every morning, bring them out. It's worth them being outside, um, and I can, this is how I managed to start 100,000 seedlings a year for our farm in a 10 by 10 grow room, which you see right here behind me, and a carport with no greenhouse. I have zero greenhouses here. And um, doesn't take much, you just have to get your system down and that's what I've done. And um, like starting this is like, are you kidding? This is all I have, but of course Bobo's starting the 8,000 or whatever it is, Xenia's. So, until we meet again, guys, keep your eyes peeled. And if you share this with your friends, it would really help me a lot and like it. And um, especially if you share it on closed groups that you think would be beneficial, that would really be great too. So, till we meet again, guys, stay safe, stay healthy, and be happy because it influences all the people around you. Ciao.